Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Citicom video we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which as usual, popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the GeForce GTX 1160. That's right, the GeForce GTX 1160, not the RTX 2060. So news of this card first broke from the website EX Preview, which I'll link their article, but it is behind a paywall at the moment. But another website, videocards.com, have since confirmed that this is most likely true, according to their sources. And generally speaking, I have to say that videocards.com are pretty accurate. So what exactly is going on here? Well, the RTX 2060, and yes, I'm probably going to screw up the names a couple of times in this video. The RTX 2060 is using the TU-106-200 GPU. But according to sources, this is not the case for the GTX 1160, and in fact will be using the TU-116 GPU. There is also another factor to consider. According to the reports that are circulating at the moment, and of course they may be inaccurate, there is no RTX branding because, well, supposedly this does not have ray tracing. It's unclear exactly what is different on the core. For example, are tensor cores present or not? We just don't know yet. But this is not a rebadged Pascal because there are reports that we do see indeed that the cards have what is known as Turing shaders. Now, in theory at least, this means that the new uh, changes to the Turing architecture at large, because don't forget, Turing is essentially a tweaked version of Volta, should be present here. So we've got the Turing mesh shaders, for example, which should be, in theory, perfectly capable of running on this card. Now, what does this mean? Well, most likely this backs up uh, my theory and the theory of other people as well, that the RTX 2060 is gonna be more closely associated in price with let's say the GTX 1070 right now. It's gonna be the 300 to 400 US dollar range. I'm betting the 350 at most personally, but of course with custom AIB variants and all that jazz. So NVIDIA want to, of course, tackle the mid-range portion of the market. If you were to take a look at Amazon or eBuyer or whatever your website of choice to purchase stuff from is, you'll notice that the Pascal inventory is running out really fast. Now, there is an exception to that, the GTX 1060. If you were to look at the GTX 1060, there is a lot of movement in the market. The GP104 core, which of course was present in the GTX 1080, is now being used in the GTX 1060. And this also means that you have GTDR5X variants of the card which are present in the market. Now the reason that's big news is because the GTDR5X variants can overclock really well, at least in terms of the memory clock, which does mean that generally speaking these models do slightly outperform the RX 580 by a slightly larger margin than the vanilla 1060, and I say vanilla in such a tone because, well, there are so many variants of the 1060, well, it's just ridiculous. Regardless, this probably backs up the fact that NVIDIA want a card when the, uh, when the 1060, Jesus, there's so many models, <laughs> when the 1060 runs out, NVIDIA will most likely want to replace it. And the most likely candidate, of course, would be the 1160. There are a couple of slight uh, discrepancies in the reports. According to EX Preview, the card that we're speaking about right now is known as the 1160 Ti. According to videocards.com, this is not the case, and it is simply the 1160 Vanilla. There is no Ti at the end of it, or Ti, or whatever you want to call it. Furthermore, there is no 1150, I don't know, whatever it's going to be called, planned. So currently the lowest in SKU here is the 1160 or 1160 Ti or whatever it ends up being called. Now in terms of the shade account and all of that information, unfortunately I cannot give you information. We can probably guess it's going to be just simply lower than that of the rumoured RTX 2060 spec. RTX 2060 features 1920 CUDA cores, which means that NVIDIA do have a little leeway here to cut the number down and still have a pretty decent amount of performance for the 1160. And of course, it's not like the only changes for Turing are the ray tracing cores. There are a number of other architectural changes. Mesh shaders look very interesting. I'm very curious to see whether we're going to have the ability to run, let's say, oh, I don't know, DLSS on these cards. I wouldn't be surprised if that is uh, present only 
in the 2060 and above, in other words, the full Turing line, but that would definitely be a major positive for these cards. But of course, it does depend heavily on the pricing. It's clear that NVIDIA do not want to lose out in the value-orientated buyer market because, well, if you were to look at the Steam hardware survey, the 1160, the RX 580, and so on, are extremely popular. And 1080p is still the most popular gaming resolution. So NVIDIA obviously don't want to lose out on that. And currently, there is not a card, even if you include the RTX 2060, which is going to appeal to gamers who want to spend like, let's say 200, 250 bucks on a graphics card. So obviously NVIDIA are keen to really tap into that market, but how effective that is when obviously AMD have a lot of leeway with their particular lineup of cards. And also AMD are being pretty aggressive right now. You can buy a couple of, you can buy a graphics card and get a couple of free games like Devil May Cry, Resident Evil 2, which is a pretty good value for money if you want to pick up, let's say an RX 580. While we're on the subject of AMD, a small piece of AMD news, the company will appear on the NASDAQ 100 on December the 24th. Now, this is with a market capitalization of 17.72 billion US dollars. So, if there is any doubt that AMD are doing fairly well right now, well, don't have it. They are doing pretty well. The company's value has actually dropped about 46% though over the last couple of months. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for this. One, of course, a lot of investors put cash into the company, rode the stock up and then, well, just took it out and did profit taking. The second reason is that the cryptocurrency mining craze is well and truly over. And that obviously has negatively in fact impacted values. But even so, AMD remain a pretty decent buy. After all, it's not like the Zen 2 architecture is going to be bad for the company. In fact, I believe that AMD are going to have a very good 2019 and most likely 2020. Now, in a piece of news that could only originate from the bizarro world, Intel are accusing another company of a monopoly, an unfair monopoly. Uh, unfortunately, Intel themselves have never been accused of this, so they have full right to do so, of course. But uh, Intel are accusing Qualcomm of unfair practices. Stephen Rogers, who serves as Intel's EVP and general counsel, said that despite Qualcomm being fined by multiple governments around the world over abuse of its patents against other companies. The company continues the same aggressive legal strategy against the partners and competition. This, Intel said, will lead to higher prices for consumers and less innovation. And Intel then pointed out that Qualcomm has been fined billions of dollars in China, $850 million in Korea, $1.2 billion in the European Union, and $773 million US dollars in Taiwan. I'm not going to go through the entire history of Intel's litigation and legal issues with very similar practices, because, well, I would make this video pretty darn long. But back in 2009, it was found by the FTC that Intel had a history of being rather unfair to rivals in the marketplace and basically cutting off the ability of rivals, cough, AMD, cough, to put their products in uh, OEM manufacturers. And we know that Intel definitely strong-armed uh, various companies to only push the Intel-branded CPUs. I don't want to get on the Intel is evil train or anything like that, but in this particular video, I do find it rather amusing that they're like, but, but, but they're doing it to us now. So I, I know it's, I guess it's a little bit of karma. And then the final piece of news today, TSMC has been cleared by the Taiwanese government to begin construction of its free NM chip manufacturing plant. The factory is expected to use 20% renewable energy and 50% recycled water. And, uh, this was, uh, accepted by the Environmental Protection Administration, and apparently TSMC will be investing 19.45 million in the project, and construction will begin in 2022. TSMC are also working on a 5NM fabrication plant, which should begin to produce chips by around the year 2020. So, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff if you have, you can like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.